Ephesians 2.10, you remember? Great. Ephesians 2.10. And it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do the good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. For you are God's handiwork. Now that, when it says, for you are, for you are, it means you must do something because you are. What you are for God, what you are doing with your life, how you are loving Him, how you are surrendering your heart, how you are positioning your life, how you are positioning yourself in relationships with your passions, with your desires, with how you will react in different situations and respond to it. You will do that in a certain way because you are. Everybody say, because I am. Because I am. That scripture says, for we are God's handiwork. And that is your choice to make sure and to acknowledge that I am created by Him. It's His hands on my, on my life. It's not first the hands of circumstance, circumstances, my emotions, my opinions, my intimidations, my successes, my whatever, all of that. That is not the hands that will form me. I am not the handiwork of my past. I am not the result product of my past in Jesus' name. It will not be so. Not of my relationships. Not of the compromises in Jesus' name. I will repent from that. I will deal with the weaknesses. I will deal with whatever happened in my life. I will live for God and for Him. I can live. Why? Because I am His handiwork. His hand is on me. You hem me in from behind and before and you've laid your hand upon me. Psalm 139. Okay? Whose hand is on your life? Who are you allowing to touch you? That's what I'm saying. Make sure who is touching you. Make sure somebody is not touching you in the flesh. Make sure he's not touching you in the, with a fleshly, lustful desire. Make sure the, your, the touch on your life is not the touch of the circumstances. Make sure it's not the touch, touch to be accepted. That's why the man can touch you in, a, in whatever way. Because you need to be accepted. You only need that because you don't allow the touch from the master. To see how you are made and how he's making you now. You are his handiwork. You are being made. And you will be made from now till you die. There will be processes how you will be made. And why not, why not experience that in a positive way? Why not just surrendering in the fact that I know I'm longing to you, Lord. Therefore, don't relax your hold on me. Let your hand be strong on my life. Mold me, form me in the image that you've dreamt about. When I allow his hand circumstances has a plan for you the enemy has a plan the devil in hell has a plan for your life how he sees you and how you must be the spirit of the world the god of this world says this is how you will be the world tells you this is how you will be and that's it we talked about that if you must cut off 80 percent of your denim pants this is the way you must be you must walk like that because this is the spirit of the world that say this is how it will be finished hello what is God saying to you what are you hearing in this season in your life what is God saying how must you be or are we just many times responding to what we would think the law in Christianity so easily I will ever respond so easily I can respond and have a reaction let's rather say I have a reaction those things that the word would say in holy living in that what I'm supposed to do and then when I start to fight with people you start to fight with your father your mother your pastor your leader and in your head you must know you are in that one big wrong place if you need to justify yourself the whole time your head you are the enemy you have a problem not you and that person may God set you free in Jesus name if I would argue the whole time in my head with my wife or she with me hopefully not in her head or me with when I was young with my father or with Dr. Jonathan my spiritual father and there, there's this thing in my heart that I would argue with him and try to justify certain things I am in the wrong place where the spirit of God is not 
There's no intimacy with you and the Spirit of God. But may God set us free. May God set us free. That we're not in that place where we need to justify certain things in our hearts. Because when I need to start to justify certain things, I'm already in the wrong. No, I'm allowing God's hand on my life. I can, I can be at peace. Because I'm His handiwork. I'm His handiwork. I th thank God for the fact that His hand is on my life. God, please mold me. Save me from myself even. So that I will find a real me according to what's in your heart. Because your hand is going to do according to what is in your heart. Your hand will do according to what is in your heart. Lord, so according to what is in your heart, if I need to see that, I need to allow your hand to experience your heart for my life. But no, here I am, Lord, and with my hands, show me your heart what I must do. You cannot bypass his hand on your life. If you want to see his heart, that means like you allow his hand to form you, to shape you, to mold you. And it's just negative if I don't understand who I am. That's the next point. We are his. God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus. Everybody say created in Christ Jesus. You are not created in your circumstances, first of all. Yes, circumstances will speak to you. You are created in the temptations, how to stand, where your faith will be tested. You are created in your successes, in your failures, in everything. In everything will be for the advantage of his kingdom. That I will be created in Christ Jesus more and more and more and more and more. Why and how? When I understand my identity, I will allow his hand on me. I will allow him to mold me when I understand identity. When I understand identity. Hello? I understand you're a sheep, so stop the pig menace. Okay, and then the enemy comes and tells you, yes, you're only a you're actually a pig, you're actually this, you're actually a rubbish. Because look at the rubbish in your life. And then the enemy will mold you because you don't know your identity. But how will you come into the place of knowing your identity? Get into the word and find out who am I? Anybody with a Bible? Put your cell phone in front of you or your Bible in front of you. Next time, bring a Bible. Okay, look, in, look like this and say, Who am I? Who am I? Now look into your Bible. Who am I? Okay, don't read your messages now. Okay. So you can try and think, Who am I according to the world, according to all the this and the that, and what people are saying about you, but who are you according to the word? Did you find Peter in there? Did you find... Mark, not Mark from the Bible. Did you find Cornelius, Patrick in there? Did you find, who did you find? Did you find Marius in there? Marius is like this and this and this and this. And this is saying to you who you are. When you understand that, who you are in Christ, more and more you can understand his, his hand on your life. Less and less you have tantrums. Less and less you need to be depressed or full of anxiety and stress and, and turmoil and all these things and up and down and whatever is happening around you, you will not be formed in your emotions. You will be formed in Christ. Amen. I'm His handiwork and I'm formed in Him. So whatever. So what? So what if uh, my emotions sometimes up, sometimes down? So what if I feel depressed one day and I don't feel like the other day and the other day I'm feeling good? So what? You are not an emotion. You are a human being. You are His handiwork. You are not made by your emotions. You are made by God Himself. And let God Himself form you and shape you every day. And you will go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from less of you to more, more less of you. <laughs> Amen. Let it be so. May God help us so that we understand I will find my identity in here. We are His workmanship, handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do, to do good works. To do. Everybody say to do. You will do according to your identity. You will do according to your identity. What is the favorite example that the world always gives? Um, the, the eagle egg under the chicken. Hey? You remember that one, hey? The eagle egg under the chicken. And so the eagle came out and mummy is scrapping in the ground and finding worms and things. So I'm trying to do that also. 
because I don't know my identity and I'm feeling rejected, I'm feeling inferior and I fail and I fail and I fail and I fail when I compare myself to all the other chickens. But I'm trying my best in my walk in this life, not according to my identity. I'm not living as an eagle, but my circumstances determined who I am and I accepted that. Now, how will I know that I'm not supposed to be a chicken among the chickens? Praise the Lord for the chickens, and they must be chickens. Because God called them to be chickens. They are living according to their identity. But it's a shame when a little eagle grow up and live like a chicken. It's a shame that if you don't go in the unique destiny according to what God has for you. You with me? So I need to find out who I am so that I can do according to who I am. His hand on my life and He will shape me according to the identity that I find in here in Christ. So that more of Christ will be seen and less of me. More of Christ and less of me. And when that is formed, it's all so that I can do. Because God created me to do. Adam, Eve, they were created to do. Not just to hang around. Hello? Super spiritual floaters just hang around. No. God is practical. God worked. God worked. And then he rested. You will work. And you will work with him. God has called us to work. Amen? But too many times we are doing. We are doing, but we don't understand who is making. Who is making me where I'm formed in Christ instead of? In my circumstances, and from that place, I'm there to do certain things. To do certain things. To do the good works. To do the good works that God has prepared for me. Now, how, what type of works can I do? James 3 says, Now, you heard it this morning. Come on. Faith without works is dead. Works that doesn't come by faith, from faith, is also dead. You can do some work and some things that you believe God is saying to you. But if it's not accompanied by faith, if it's not coming from faith, it's not from God. Because faith and your works must be united. It must be united. Whatever you do, it must be by faith. Because you believe in the Son of God and you believe that He will guide you. You believe that He will be there. You will believe in that work He will be seen. You will believe that you will have greater intimacy in that work, what you will do. You will know that in that work you will give Him honor. You know that in that work He will speak to you. There will be no work that you will do without Him. Amen. So, but that work will only come if I understand how I'm formed in Christ. As I'm created to do the good works. That good works is coming from faith. Faith is coming from the Word. So what is it? Once again, I allow God's hand on my life. Allow His Word to shape me. As I allow His hand to shape me. As He is shaping me, I'm finding myself here in the Word. My identity. I'm formed in Christ. In Christ, I'm formed. Oh, this is who I really am. A life that I lose at the cross, I'm crucified with Christ. A life hidden in Christ is revealed to me. Amen? You with me? And when I see my identity, wow, I'm created. But all this, wow, this is who I am. So what? No, no, not so. What just? I've been created in this way to do. Eagle, you are created to be an eagle. And there I said, wow, I'm an eagle. Just sit there and die. It's not just finding your identity. And when you understand your identity, it is to do based on your identity. You must do according to your identity. But if your identity is in what is ever around there, it's your identity is in your hurt, your identity is in your rejection, or in your inferiority, or in your superiority, or in your opinions, you find your identity in your opinions and your perspectives about life. You will do according to that. You will do according to your pride, according to your self, self-righteousness. You'll do according to that. That is from that place that you will do your works. But that faith will be according to the fact that you believe you cannot make a success. And the good works that you will do is good according to your faith that you cannot make a success. 
That's why the guys in the world without Christ can even make an gr- excellent success. Because they do it with, from a place of faith that they can do it. That principle apply. Doesn't matter what. That, that principle apply. And that is with positive confession. That they take it from the word of their confession. Hello? And based on that faith, they do. But that's where they start. They don't start with identity in Christ. But the principle apply. So they can have their success. But what's the difference? Christ is not seen in that success. That success will be burnt away. Will be burnt up. Have no eternal value. That what they've built will be a curse for their children. Because Christ is not there in it. Hello? The principle applies in the guys in the world. The word even says some of them they are so much even wiser than so many ch- children of God. So many Christians. We need a wake-up call, man. Amen. So that we understand how to do the good works that God has prepared for us to do. So that is going to the next point. I'm doing the good works. I'm doing what God has called me to do because I have faith. I have faith because I know the... Because in the Word I saw my identity and myself in it. Because why? Because... I'm His handiwork. I'm created by Him. He is busy with me. Amen. That I will allow. And that's why I'm coming to sit and I want to ask God, God, what do you have for me? Good work. Good works that God has prepared for us in advance. For us in advance to do. In advance to do. Well, like we always say with the day words, when you come to your daddy... And he says, I have prepared for you something that you must do today. And you come and you say, oh, Dad, I love you. And I respect you. And it's awesome to know you. uh, But please come today and help me with this and this and this. Your dad will think, what the freak is happening with you? Can I say that word? What, What is happening with you? I just told you, my son, wake up. I just told you I have things that I prepared for you to do. Really, really, Dad, I love you and uh, and it's 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 awesome to know you and I will always respect you and uh, please help me today in what I must do here and in my studies and in my work and help me with my finances and that you will provide for me. And I said I have something prepared for you to do. So really, uh, forgive me, Lord, uh, or forgive me, Dad, that I didn't do this and this. And so we carry on, and God is just waiting, and He's telling to you, saying to you, I have prepared prepared something for you to do. Can you just give God a logic response? What is it, Lord? What have you prepared for me in advance to do? Not according to, first of all, your job and that what you're doing. Just come with open, objective perspective and sit with God. That's why we say, as wise virgins, right ahead. But even in every day, make sure that is your perspective. Amen. God has prepared for my things to do. So, I will, I will be at the job. But in an hour's time, phone this man. Shh. Send this WhatsApp. In this situation, just leave it for now. Do this this afternoon. Tackle this situation. Go and see that person now. Go and see, phone that client now. No, don't phone him. Go to, go to his place. This is going to take extra time. You just do it. But you are aware of the Spirit. You are aware of his guidance. You are, you are praying in tongues. You are asking his guidance just while you're on the way because you and he is walking together. It's not you must first run back to him and here. And, but many have that mentality, you know. I must first go and pray about this. Yes. But you must be prayed in already. You had to get the extra oil already that morning, the previous evening. In the holiday, you had to take that. You should have taken that time with God already. Are you with me? So that when I'm there, I'm, I'm in that place of intimacy with Him. I've trained myself how to walk with a man. With a man. Ladies, with the man in your life. And you hear His voice. You know His touch. You know where He's going with you. May God help you. May God help me in Jesus' name. The good works that God has prepared for us to have. 
and He has prepared for us, and that means I know His will for my life. I know His will for my life. We are God's workmanship. Created in, I will find myself. To do. Created to do, not created just to wara wara. Created to do what? Good works. That what is excellent from the heart of the Father. Excellence. His opinions. Opinions from the heart of heaven. God's ideas. What you do, this was God's idea. This was God thinking about this. This was God's initiative. What do you do? That he has prepared for me in advance. So to prepare it for me in advance is I must know what is his will. And for that we said Romans 12. Therefore I urge you, brothers, I can only urge you, I beseech you, I command you, I instruct you. It has all that meanings, that Greek word, all together. But I can only urge you, beseech you, instruct you, encourage you. If you are a brother. So you who understand you have an identity as a brother. You, brother and sister, in the view of God's mercy. I urge you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. In the light of God's mercy. What is that? In the light of God's mercy. God's mercy is the fact that he has enabled you. His mercy and grace. In the light of God that has given you everything. In the light of the fact that you are able to drive a car, I urge you to drive on the left side of the road. I urge and beseech you to stop at the red robot, if the robot is red. <laughs> Hello? Why will I say that? Because you are able to do that. Because of the mercy of God in your life. Because you are enabled by God. Because you know who you are. But for the three-year-old child, I urge you to drive not on the right-hand side of the road. Drive on the right side of the road. As you limit me. Good. That's stupid. How can you tell that to a three-year-old child? But why will he, this man, Paul, say this to these people? Brothers and sisters, you can do this. You can. You can give your life. You can give your body as a living, holy, and a pleasing unto God sacrifice. You can give yourself as a sacrifice unto the Lord. To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Living sacrifice, I will be alive there. Here I am, Lord, I'm awake to do your will. Not like when I, you know, when you're busy with the Lord, immediately, two minutes later, you are falling asleep. You can watch a movie for an hour and a half. But as soon as you must read Bible or start to pray in tongues, you cannot go beyond one, all right, let's say ten minutes. It's just really, there's such a thing come against me, such an oppression. The enemy just really, I need to stand in the spirit against these things. Rubbish. Just, just believe in your heart. You can. You have it. You want to. It will be according to your faith and how you position yourself. Why you are not too tired to go and do the one and a half hour movie? No problem with the movie. But if you can do an hour and a half movie but you cannot even pray for 15 minutes, then you have a problem. Then you have a serious problem. If you can be excited in another place, but when you are before, in front of God and, and in His throne room, you're not excited. You're getting all this religious thing over your life. May that not be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. A living sacrifice. I'm alive. I'm not a dead sacrifice. Some of you, you suffer in silence. Some of you, they just suffer in silence. I will just suffer in silence. But what is happening? You are just moaning and groaning here on the inside. You know, this is not right. I'm supposed to do this and this. I must just give up again. I cannot live the dreams. And I cannot do that. And I cannot do, do what I feel in my heart. And you are just one moaning, groaning pot intimately with a, 
with some other depression or some other self-righteous, whatever. No, that will not be our lives anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It will not be so. So may God help us. We will be alive in how we sacrifice ourselves. When I deny myself, there will be life. I'm a living sacrifice. I'm alive and I have life to give unto God. There's a life that I just want. I don't want to die for Him. I want to live for Him. And if in the process it means death, so be it. That's gain. But the challenge is not to die for Him. The challenge is to live for Him. A living sacrifice. Okay, so here I am with who I am and what I can do, Lord. And secondly, a holy sacrifice. It's for God and for God alone. Amen. It's not today I present myself before God as a sacrifice. Tomorrow I present myself for lust as a sacrifice. I present myself holy for my opinion. I'm committed to my opinion. I'm committed to what I feel. I'm committed to how I see things, how I can do in relationships, how I can compromise and see that it's okay. No, it will not be so. I'm wholly set apart. I will put my body holy as if unto the Lord and for Him alone. And my holiness unto Him will be something that is alive. 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 It's not, I will have life. I'm supposed to read the Word and let's look into the Word. And I have a life out there. And then I start to read the Word. Just look at what excites you. And you will know if you present your body as a living sacrifice or some other dead religion. But ask the Holy Spirit to bring it up in you, to, to let it be raised up in you. Get into prayer. Get into the place where you start to say it out loud. I will be excited about God's Word. I will be excited about Him. I will be excited about Christ in people around me. I will be excited to see Him more in creation. I will be excited about His plans for me in my job. Some of you guys really standing in, on the crossroads to know what, where is the job that God has for me. Where is the next phase for my life? Quite a few of you guys in that valley of decision. Are you excited about what's coming? Even though you don't know what's coming. But there will be more of Christ. That's what you can decide now. There will be more of Christ. There will be less of yourself. You will mature. You will not compromise. And if you can put that 100 and 200 things that you can list. Of, make a list of what's going to happen in this year. Even though you don't know nothing. No, if you know nothing, it means you know everything. You don't know nothing, it means you know everything. Hey. Yeah, thank you. What am I saying? That list. You can list a hundred things that you can be and do in this year without knowing if you have a job anywhere. Just go into the Word. And you'll know and you will see what is the principle of everything that you can do in this season and how you will be excited about Christ and what He will do in and through you. God is a very practical, practical, practical God. And as you go and as you reach out, okay, I don't have a job now at this stage. No, but there's good work that God has prepared for me. No, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting for God uh, for this job. Now you are sitting, sitting and you're waiting. You are busy with some other religious freakiness. No, you're not sitting in that religious freakiness. You do the works that God has called you to do. It's not like that God forgot to give you works to do today. True? There's good works that He has prepared for you for today. So if it's not that I have a job from somebody where that will give me a salary at the end of the, of the month, I have some other jobs. So I have eight hours tomorrow. What am I going to do with it? Okay, Lord, here I am. There's not a job at this stage that you are giving me with a salary at the end of the month, but what is the job that you asked me to do? Oh, you're going to go here and pray for that group. You're going to go there to the hospital and encourage people. You're going to go there and you pray for the teachers. You're going to evangelize. You're going to give prophetic words to people. Hello? You're going to be out there. You're going to be doing a lot of things. And you will have not enough time when you start to flow in this. You will not have enough time. And so, by the way, by the 27th day of being part of these good works that you are doing, God just opened up a door 
when somebody saw the integrity and the character and the stability of your life. He said, I always was looking for somebody like that. And just this major job opportunity with a salary, that type of job, opens up for you. But there's nobody sitting here without a job. But there's a lot of people using a job with a salary as an excuse not to do the job that God has called them to do. <clears throat> Are you with me? Don't link job with a salary. Okay? There's good works that God has prepared for you in advance for you to do. He has prepared for you. That means you need to hear His voice. That need, means you need to understand His voice. So, we are going, a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. It's pleasing unto Him. When what? When I walk in faith. He's pleased by faith. He's pleased by faith. I will live for Him. A living sacrifice. Hello? That means I will move with life. With a life that is from God, I will move wherever He tells me to move. And I will... Give that life to others also around me. And that will be pleasing unto Him when I do it by faith. Do by faith means there will be times that you don't understand why you are doing it and how it's going to happen, but you still do. It's not you wait until you understand. We, some call that waiting on the Lord. But it's just a religious excuse for <coughs> not going out by faith. You are always waiting even when you go out by faith you are always in this place of waiting because you're always dependent on Him. You will not do without seeing, without hearing Him. And that is a place of waiting. That's an attitude of waiting. It's not just sitting and waiting for something to happen. Amen. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is all part of to understand what is the works that you have prepared for me in advance. You have prepared for me in advance to do. That what he has prepared, for that I need to be transformed in the renewing of your mind. I need to be transformed in the renewing of my mind because and how it will happen is because I have the mind of Christ. There's two minds involved in your life. There's the mind of Christ in your spirit and there's the mind that you have that can go and do whatever he wants to. And this must submit to the mind of Christ that is in your spirit where there's perfection, where his voice is clear, there's clarity, there's clarity in your spirit, there's perfection, there's purity in your spirit. But your spirit must mature so that you can hear clearly, clearly, and you need to understand how not to live like a baboon from your soul, but to submit it to what God has for you. I have the mind of Christ, and I do hold the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of God in me. Take your finger. Take your finger. Now put it here. Point it here at your heart. And now say, I do have the mind of Christ. And I hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God in my spirit. That's it. You have it in there. You have the perfection of God's awesome plan. You have the accurate plans of God for your destiny. Right here, right here, right here. It's there already. You have the mind of Christ there. If you can just make sure that this thing will not overrule what is here. But if you can start to think as he is thinking... When you can have the opinion that he has, I'm thinking as God is thinking. God's strategy is my strategy. God's opinion is my opinion. What I give to you now is God's opinion. What I'm saying to you now is what God is saying. That is how we're supposed to live. We're not there yet and we will grow more and more and more to be there. But it is so exciting to see when you see more and more, it's God. this was from God. This was from God in your life. Amen. Are you still with me? Be transformed by renewing of your mind and you will be able to test and approve what is the will, God's will. His good and pleasing and perfect will. But we want to know His will. And God, show me what I must do, what I must do and how I must do it. But you are not establishing the previous points. 
of I'm willing to do good works that comes from faith, that comes from the word that I'm coming in a place to know the word, that comes from a place of me knowing my identity, that I will be able to walk out there and fly from the from the cranes, from the from the cliff. <laughs> I will be able to do that. Why? Because I'm an eagle. Hello. I'm finding my identity because his hand is on me. And I will allow the processes on my life so that more and more my identity will shine forth. Why? His hand will be on me because my identity is I'm a child. I'm a son. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. And because I know that identity, I understand God's hand on my life because God is treating me as, as a son. He will discipline me. He disciplines everyone that he loves. He disciplines everyone that he treats as a son. Amen. So because you know your identity, you're a son of God. You're a child of God. Therefore, you can take the molding. Therefore, you can take what he has for you. Therefore, you can be in that place of understanding and come to say, I'm a son and I want to know my father. I want to know who I am. I want to know the role model Christ Jesus, the son of God. And from that place, this is how I handle this work. Amen. So when that is all a process that I allow in my life, then it's not this frustrating thing of I just want to know left, right, up, down, where am I going, what am I doing, Lord? But we want to use God as an ATM. And he says he's not, in, he's not willing to go that way. And he will frustrate you in his answers. And you bind the devil and you chase out the devil and the devil is not even involved in the fight. Hello? It's just you and God that must settle things. But he will confuse you. He will frustrate you. And you think, oh, I must just, I'm just quitting this one. Finish with this one. Finish with that. But meanwhile, he's God frustrating you because he wants you to go back to the place of, do you love my hand on your life? Do you allow me to be dad, to be father, speaking to you and speaking into your life? Try to see me as your father. Try to accept who I am as father. Hear my voice. I am speaking to you. Hello? Find yourself in my son, your identity. Hello? And understand I have ena I will enabling you to do awesome things with me. Hello? Allow that. Allow that, my brother, my sister. Okay, it is good. It is pleasing. It will be perfect. Pleasing when I do it from a place of worship. Pleasing when it's from a place of worship. Good, you're doing the right thing. But you're not doing it from a place of intimacy with God. No. Why? And you're doing it and in your Christian walk, suddenly you're becoming dry. It's just like <clears throat> you're becoming dry. It's dry. Because you try to do it and sometimes you reach to the place that you are doing good. You are doing His will and it's good. But it's not pleasing. It's not the place of, of intimacy, of warmth between you and God. And that what can be great. Hello? But His perfect will will be there where the one that is perfect is totally seen. And that is Jesus. His perfect will is where you are doing, and what you are doing, there's just Christ that is seen. Christ is seen in your relationships. Christ is seen in your attitudes. Christ is seen in how you will respond. How with this person, you have a certain spirit, you know, and you will respond to him like this, and you will have your private joke, and you have that, but you know it's, it's not right before God. And with this other people, you will respond like that. This is a man with no identity. This is a man knowing, not, not knowing himself. This is a man faking, because he's actually in himself, he's faking. He's fake. That's why you will be... Not you guys. That guy will be like this with this group, like this with this leader, like this with this mummy, and we're like this with that one. It's somebody that don't know who he is. She doesn't know who she is. And what she live, live is a fake life. Let's get out of the fake life. What a waste. What a waste. Good pleasing and perfect will of God. So, finally it says, we are His workmanship, 
cre created to we are created to do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. So in the doing, when we come to that place, now my mind is changed. I'm becoming sensitive. I can see His will. Now, at the end of the day, last point, what must you do? You must just literally do it. But so many people come to this place and they're so excited about God and His promises and things that He set and how things must happen. But they never come to the place of doing it. Still, because they don't allow this process. Don't allow this process. May God help you with that. So that at the end of the day, this doing has to do with immediate obedience. 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 You know your God. You know your identity. You know He's for me. You know He has the best for you. You know His word. And you start to know His will. Now just get up there and start to do. Because the more you do, the more you will understand His will. But He will not reveal His will further, further for you if you don't start to do. But when you stand up, Joshua, and do. I obey and I cross the Jordan. I do. Then His will will open up for me further. But if you don't do, God will stop showing you that what He wants to do through you. Why must He do it? Because you will just come more and more in sin. But start to do what He is asking you to do tomorrow. And do that with your whole heart. Do that with everything. Do that not with moaning and groaning, but do it as if unto the Lord. And so much more the day after that will open up from God and that clarity about what is His will and purposes for your life. It's not just about sitting more. It's about doing more. Then you will see more about His perfect will for you. Amen? It's about obedience, about following. But in this doing... It's a walking with God in the doing. And that, what he, that is what he has called Adam and Eve to do. In the cool of the day, he was there in the Garden of Eden. And he was calling Adam. It's not like God was confused, didn't know where Adam was. <laughs> you know, he knew exactly where he was. But he was calling. He knew exactly, but he wants you to respond. And he wants you to come to him. And that is... At the end of the day, with this good works that God has prepared for us to do, He wants to be involved. He wants to walk with you in it. He wants to be excited with you in it. He wants to be there when you don't know that. He wants to say, uh-uh, yeah, not there. He will take you to that, to that off ground. What is the off ground? Not the cliff again. On the edge. He will take you there to the edge. He, not the devil, he will take you to the edge just so that you will say, Lord, what must I do? He must follow me. We're going here. <laughs> he just wanted you to respond in that situation. He just wants your attention. He's, he just wants the attention from his child. Are you with me? So many times he, not the devil, will take you in places where you will feel like, <gasps> oh, I don't know. But he's just, who's holding you? Whose hand is on you? Who's forming you? Who's with you? Hello, wake up call. We are here to enjoy it. God is not like putting in all these things. And you're just getting out of that. And then the next one is there. Though I'll go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will have a feast in front of my enemies. That's what David says because he's knowing how to walk with a shepherd. Walk with a shepherd. Walk with a shepherd. Enjoy the walk, even through the valley of the shadow of death. Enjoy the feast when the enemy comes against you. Just rejoice in him because you know the enemy has nothing on you. There's an excellent life for you laying ahead. Nothing can take it from you. Nothing can take it from you except you yourself. God, come and set us free in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us too, Lord, that we will not be formed by the world. We will not be formed by our temptations, our sin, our, our shortcomings, our failures. We will not be formed by that. And where it happened in the past, God, tonight we repent from that in the name of Jesus. When you are, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, help us to change. Help us to change into the likeness, the image of you. Let it be once again your hand and only your hand. 
like you wanted it to be, Lord. But we messed it up. We will not allow other hands to mess up our lives. We will not allow our flesh to mess up our life. In Jesus' name. Let's stand. So, Lord, come and change our lives. Change us, Lord. You are standing here. And you must make that decision. I know we all make that decision, but tonight you need a breakthrough. Say, God, God, here I am. I need to see what you have prepared for me. And I need to find you. And I find myself in the world. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. I need to know who I am. Help me to look in you to your word, to find who I am, so that I can do that what you have called me to do. If that's you, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for every man, every woman. His hand is up, Lord. I pray that you will meet him in a supernatural, in a supernatural way. In a supernatural way, in the name of Jesus. God, that they will have dreams, that they will have visions, that they will have a clarity, a clarity. Oh, God, show yourself to them in an amazing way. I pray for that, Father, each one reaching out right now, that you will come and do that for them. Come and change our lives, Lord. Come and change our lives. Meet us by your mercy, by your grace, Lord. Lord, that we will not waste a life anymore. We will not waste a day. We will not waste a month. We will not waste this year in Jesus' name. But we will be able to do the good works that you have prepared for us in advance to do. Because we will allow you to form us. We will allow you to form us. And we will allow your hand to be strong over our lives. We will allow you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we choose to get into your word to find ourselves. Find ourselves. We will not believe the rubbish of what the world will tell us and people around us telling us who we are and who we are not. In Jesus' name. We will only believe the word, what you are saying to us, who we are. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Let it be so in Jesus' name for our lives. So we pray. And we thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name.